Today we're going to fix an issue with the Mac SE 30 that we restored last year and take a look at some additional storage options with a floppy EMU and a blue SCSI. Last year for Marchintosh, I restored this old Mac SE 30 that I picked up at a garage sale. Unfortunately, it has a frustrating screen flickering issue that has been plaguing me all year. So today, I'm going to pull out all the stops and see if I can get this classic Macintosh fully working. I also have a couple modern storage solutions that I can use with this, including an external floppy EMU that will also work with Apple IIs, and a blue SCSI SD to SCSI solution that'll let me give the 30-year-old hard drive in this machine a rest, because it sounds like a buzzsaw. In preparation for fixing the flickering and screen tearing issues, I've researched as much as possible, and I have a few ideas what may be causing the problem. To be honest though, I really fear that the problem is the flyback transformer, and a new flyback transformer is really beyond my budget. However, if you saw my last video on the Mac SE SuperDrive, then you know I have a good looking analog board that I can use if I have to. When I originally recapped and restored this machine, I did note that the CRT connector was badly burnt. So I'll replace it with a set I ordered last year. The board connector was easy enough to replace, but the cable connector that goes to the CRT was a huge pain. None of my Molex tools or tricks would work. So I finally resorted to cutting the old one away a little bit at a time just so I could be sure that I would not damage the pins. Once completed though, I was really happy with the results. While I was working on the board, I also added two more coats of high voltage Corona dope to the flyback transformer. I put two on originally and that should be enough, but I saw a few people online saying that more is better, that four is really more appropriate. So I'm already in here. I don't know that it'll help, but it can't hurt. I also checked the board again for any cracked solder joints I may have missed when I originally recapped it. And I did find a couple lifted pads that had a good electrical connection, but were not ideal. I have seen it suggested that this happens when inserting the new caps, but I suspect that I damaged them originally when I broke the caps loose from the abundant hot glue that was holding them in place from the factory. I originally thought that the hot glue was just there to hold the parts for soldering at the factory, but I now suspect they're there to prevent this type of damage. All right, I've got it all back together, so now for the moment of truth. And nothing. Let's see what's going on. I opened it back up, and of course I missed reconnecting the PSU at the analog board. What a dork. Okay, I've got it all back together, so now for the moment of truth. Will it work? Part two. Hey, we got a chime. <laughs> Let's see how stable this screen is. Now that's looking solid. I'll run it a while and see how it does. Well, it's still booting up. Okay, after a couple hours of testing, it seems to be rock solid. So next, I want to have the ability to easily load software from my PC that I've downloaded off the internet into this machine. And for that, I've settled on the floppy EMU, mainly because it's also compatible with the Apple II Plus I dream of owning one day. I thought I had ordered a kit, but it turned out the only thing I had to assemble was the acrylic case, so I'm going to spare you that. The floppy EMU turns out to be a really slick product. It did come out of the box configured for the Apple II, but it was a really simple matter to download the Mac firmware and updating it took all of two minutes. I had also forgotten that it came with an SD card that has a bunch of classic Apple II and Mac software preloaded. All I had to do was select the Oregon Trail floppy in the menu and it came right up on the desktop just as if I had put a floppy in a drive. Then all I had to do was point my nephews at it and I got three to four hours of free burn-in testing. You must need to fix the wagon somehow, right? Oh, my extra wheels. It was really fun to point out to my nephews that Raven Wolf Farm, where we're at now, was built in 1890. And that the Oregon Trail was used well into the 1890s. So it's entirely possible that people that traveled here on the Oregon Trail have stayed in this home. So the next issue I want to deal with is the 30 plus year old hard drive that sounds like a buzzsaw. 
I just don't see the point in just driving it to its death. I don't know how many hours it has left in it, but I suspect not many. Besides, it's only 40 megs. The solution I settled on is the Blue SCSI SD card to SCSI system. I like the fact that it was only $25 for the kit and I could seamlessly install it in place of the original hard drive or use it in conjunction with it if I wanted to. Assembly and setup of the Blue SCSI is beyond the scope of this video, but I plan to release a concise build and setup guide soon to help you through the process. I'll give you a hint though, it is a lot simpler than a lot of the guides and videos make it out to be. Once the Blue SCSI was assembled and set up, I installed it in place of the original hard disk. The carrier that came with it is not really suited for my setup, so I plan to reinstall it in the PDSIO port on the back of the SE30 using a bracket I found on Thingiverse. Of course, I'll need to assemble my 3D printer before I can print anything. And the best part is, is I didn't even need any of the parts from the Mac SE SuperDrive other than the programmer switch I borrowed just to make the SE30 here complete. So I think I'll see about restoring it in a future video using a new modern replacement printed circuit board for the main board that's destroyed. I hope you enjoyed this video, and when the Blue SCSI video is ready, I'll link it right here. In the meantime, I need to get back to the all-important testing of this classic machine. Apparently we've reached the Kansas River Crossing. So I need to decide, how do I get across the river again?